Southern Africa's white rhinos have never been more threatened. The species is currently on the verge of extinction, and unless more can be done to protect these magnificent animals, the legacy for our children will be one of extraordinary loss. But there is hope. Whilst this is a story about rhinos, it's also a story about people and partnerships that will ensure a positive legacy for generations to come. In the race against time for the white rhino, this is a story about what a few people with the will and determination can do when they come together with a goal in mind. This is a story about powering possibilities. Rhino poaching is not simply about people poaching rhinos. It gets simplified. Because it's a complex situation, uh, it means that we need to take a multi-pronged approach to find solutions to the, to the situation. And to do that, the, the requirement to get as many different people with as many different skills uh, and expertise involved in the situation as possible. In June 2014, the Game Rangers Association of Africa spearheaded a secret initiative to relocate 12 rhino from Exaro's Manketi Game Reserve to a Rapa Game Reserve in Botswana, owned by Debswana Mining Company. Thanks very much for everybody for being here. Leading the team and overseeing the capture and translocation was Marius Fulz, research manager at Manketi Reserve. At 7 o'clock we start capturing at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning from the holding area. It's like a responsibility. To me, it's about caring. Uh, do we really care? You know, Africa means something. Animals and our nature and our ecosystems is part and parcel of Africa. We would like to uh, get people to understand that that responsibility and accountability lies with us, everybody. All of us. A day like this, uh, again, it's, it's, a, it's a reaffirmation and a commitment of Exaro uh, that uh, mining and uh, wildlife uh, can truly uh, exist together. We've got 16,000 hectares around the mine, yeah? And uh, between us and the power stations. And for me, to see mega industry in harmony with uh, the ecosystem is, uh, is, is very, very important. To go there uh, to Urapa and to see them be released there is going to be fantastic. The next day, the sun rose over a determined crew. We've got a deadline by which time the convoy must leave to leave us enough time to go through the border post and we need to try to get all, all the animals on the crates by then. We're going to operate with two capture teams, two helicopters, basically two totally duplicated teams. Big industry, big corporates have a huge role to play in conservation. Um, some of them do own large tracts of land, um, natural landscapes, which can contribute positively towards conservation and the sustainability um, also of their operations. And I think that was very important uh, at, from our side. It was an amazing opportunity to bring these two partners in the project, uh, Exaro uh, being one of them who really from the outset were so committed to the project and they, they bought into it seeing the value beyond any monetary value. They, they saw the, the conservation value of this project and they wanted to be part of it. Lift off and the hunt for the rhino begins. Okay, I'll submit it in my 
Almost immediately, the team spots a crash of rhino moving through the bush. As Dr. Morea readies the M99 tranquilizer dart, the pilot has to track the rhino from the air in order to get the best angle. Finally, he's ready to take the shot. The ground vehicles get the go-ahead to move in. Now begins a critical stage. The chopper has to land the vet in a clearing as near to the darted rhino as possible in order for the vet to link up with the ground crew and move in. The tranquilizer dart seems to have taken effect. But you can never be too sure, and a cautious approach is advised. M99 is, is an amazing drug, um, and there's a huge amount of trials that have obviously gone into, into these uh, immobilizing drugs. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a strange scenario is that uh, each animal responds differently to, to the drug. So um, rhinos uh, require a certain amount uh, and it's got nothing to do with the size of the animal. Uh, Nyala, for example, probably take more of the drug than a, than a rhino. Although sedated, it's still advisable to keep a grip on the rope. Eventually, she goes down. The horn on this female is breathtaking, and on this occasion, it's perfectly safe. As Dr. Morea picks the thorns out of his face, the ground crew have joined him to begin the process of sedating, documenting DNA and notching. In under 15 minutes, the animal is ready to be loaded up for the journey. Not an easy undertaking. Thank you. Okay. Leave the earplug for now. We're giving some dyes a pan, just yeah. so she stays nice and calm while we're loading her and moving her around now. With the mother loaded, the capture team turns its attention to her calf. The team works expertly to keep the tranquilized rhino calm. All horns are microchipped. Then the drilled holes are sealed with a resin. Being a vet in the rhino capture game means sometimes behaving like a rugby front row forward. Gone, gone well considering what would happen. I think everything went, went great. The first dart was, uh, seems to have been an unsuccessful animal, was not affected at all. So it, uh, it made it a little bit more challenging, but taking everything into consideration, uh, I think everything went great. With no time to waste, the hunt resumes.
While the threat of poaching is one of the major reasons for this translocation, the moving of rhinos to Botswana also increases genetic diversity across borders in sub-Saharan Africa. Traditionally, rhinos are ranging animals, but because their habitat has shrunk considerably with human sprawl, it has become an imperative to manage genetic diversity. Capturing 12 rhinos in eight hours is a complicated and unpredictable undertaking, and sometimes the best laid plans often go astray. Plans have changed slightly. Um, we've been looking for two cows that's got bull calves with them, but we've been flying for a bit more than an hour now, and we haven't found the bull calves. So what we're going to do, we're just going to dart two cows, um, and they've actually just now found a nice adult cow with a fairly big um, heifer. That, that's at breeding age. So we're going to dart those two and we're not going to do the, the bulls anymore because the whole purpose of this thing is actually to send them breeding animals to Botswana. These are all parameters that we use to um, just see how she's doing while we're waiting for the trucks to get her. But she's fine at this stage. Leader of Capture Team 2, vet Eric Varane, fastens an ankle collar for tracking purposes. Besides Exaro, other sponsors were brought on board to assist with the cost of a translocation of this nature. The project would not have happened if it weren't for the sponsors and for which we are really, really grateful. Uh, the Jenna Clifford Foundation, uh, through um, the CEO, Dex Kotzer, uh, they donated a, a healthy sum of money to us to assist in the translocation of the animals. We also had Roman's Pizza, Zurich um, Insurance, really out of the box sponsors um, for Rhino Project. It was also exciting to have their actual participation in the project on the day in terms of the translocation. They were there, they, they were wanted to be part of it and see conservation in action. The sun is now high in the sky and against the backdrop of Ixaro's Grutgeluk coal mine, the choppers go in search of the last rhino. rhino has a series of notches cut into the ear in order to identify animals individually. This corresponds to a number on a central database which allows animals to be effectively monitored. This system has been so effective in Botswana that rangers can now readily identify individual animals and give them all personalized names. These were the last two animals, yes. Um, Two very nice cows that we that we captured. So um, yeah, from here we're going to just crate them all, and then the convoy is going to depart. We're sending then 10, 10 females uh, to Botswana, and six of them are adult cows. It's well, probably all six of them are pregnant already. So in effect, you can talk about 16 animals that we're going to send them. The first animal's been standing on the truck since 8 o'clock this morning. It's about 2 o'clock already, so we need to get get going. So we made a call. We're leaving the two uh, young bulls. We're just sending the 10 females then. Back at base, everything is readied for the long haul to Botswana.
These are the seals that we close the doors with. And then, you know, we record all the numbers on the seals. And then uh, we communicate with the Botswana people that this is a documentation, it's got these seals. So that when the trucks go into Botswana, and then they arrive there and then they check the seals against the information that we gave them or we emailed them just to make sure that this was not open along the, along the way to the swan. The convoy sets off slightly behind schedule, headed for the Botswana border. Dr. Marea insists on a final check of the rhino before the sun sets. With such a valuable cargo, every stop is a danger to both the rhino and the humans. Tight security is an imperative. Roblesbrug border post is only two hours away and the convoy arrives just after sunset. The aim is to drive through the night and release the rhino early the next morning, making sure that they spend the least amount of time in the crates as possible. Everything is going according to plan. The convoy waits to get clearance to go through the border to get to Botswana. They wait and wait and wait. Despite the correct paperwork, the convoy is turned around. Although having acquired permission to take the rhino through Groblesbrug border post, the local authorities were unwilling to accept the paperwork on such a sensitive cargo and instructed the trucks to head for the CITES accredited Ramatlabama border post almost nine hours away. By morning, the whole team was pretty shattered. But the drivers pressed on nonetheless, determined to get the rhino to their new homes. Once more, the waiting begins. The rhinos were never meant to be held for this long in the crates. And while CITES regulations are strict, the same law meant to protect them is now causing them harm. Conservation changes, new, cha new conservation challenges arise, so too then um, we, we start hitting possibly barriers in, in, in CITES or any regulation to the, for that fact, in that uh, it needs to be adaptive. Uh, these regulations uh, are sometimes very inflexible and um, are responding, when they are drafted, responding to that current context. As that context changes, so to the regulations need to change. The rhinos are starting to overheat. It's been over 24 hours in the crates and Dr. Maria is getting very concerned for their well-being. He gets the trucks driving in circles to try and get airflow through the crates, but time is running out. Finally, they get word and make for the border crossing. Everyone is on tenterhooks thinking it'll be called off at any moment. No man's land. And then, Botswana. It's like 24 hours to get here. We can't find it. This man is tired. <laughs> it would have been another 40 minutes and we, have, we would have turned back. 20, 20, 18 minutes past 11, I got, we got to go ahead. So it was a uh, close call. They're very calm, I'm, I'm happy with them now, but I want to get the wheels rolling as soon as possible. Great. They're back on the road with 666 kilometers to go. The trip has taken them almost a thousand kilometers out of their way to get to a Rapa game reserve, but their spirits are back up. Every available resource on the Botswana side is offered to our translocation team, including veterinary, 
administrative and even military, with the Botswana Defence Force also driving a massive detour to meet up with the convoy at the second border post, ensuring their safe passage. As the trucks chase the setting sun, it's now a race to the release site in Arapa with the exhausted rhino. It's 1 a.m. on a freezing cold morning at Arapa Game Reserve when the team finally arrive. It's taken over 40 hours on the road to get here, but as they set up for the release, there's no time for weariness. Yesterday, the capturing process was unbelievable. The professionalism of, of everybody, the assistance of everybody, the pilots, the vets, the support teams, the drivers, everybody that was there, it was just fantastic to see how uh, well organized they are and, and, and how good they do their jobs. Every one of them came through exactly as they should have. And I'm very proud to see how people uh, came up with, with, the, with the answers. The vets administer an antidote to counter the effects of the tranquilizer, and then one by one, the doors are opened. The trip has been particularly rough on some of the rhino, with this mother's horn having been ripped clean off in the cramped crate. While the horn will regrow, it's incredibly painful for the rhino and a pretty gory sight. Finally, reunited with her mum, it feels safe enough to move off into their new home. A rhino's most powerful sense is that of smell. As this mother explores an unfamiliar environment, she can smell her calf close by. She's not wrong. Much to the relief of the whole team, one by one, all the rhino leave the crates. Eric Varane, head vet at Arapa, couldn't be happier. I see rhinos actually as the symbol of biodiversity conservation. And that is what I would like to see in 50 years. I don't only want to see rhinos. I actually want to see healthy ecosystems where rhinos are simply part of it. If we cannot protect the rhino, how are we going to protect the other animals? The next morning, the rhino have all but disappeared into their new homes. In the fight to save the white rhino, this has been one of the good stories. A story about hope and a story about powering possibility. Ten days later, the rhino are tracked to a nearby watering hole. They are all healthy and thriving in their new home. This is only the beginning with many more planned translocations. This is the start of a legacy that our children's children can be proud of. <laughs>